Hi there, my name is Tap Nuo, and I'm a techno artist from Los Angeles. Today I'll be doing a breakdown of the VIP of my record, Cathode, which is available on Techno Mixtape 2. And for this tutorial, I'll really just be focusing on the bass design. Uh, the reason for that would be that I did a tutorial already on the previous version with Luke Lethal, and given that this is the VIP, the drums and the rhythmic elements, tempo, all that is the same. The only difference is there's one vocal sample that's not in this one, but I didn't change any of the design of the drums or the, the mix of the drums or anything like that. It's really just the bass that, that differentiates this record as well as the arrangement. Um, this one, being a VIP, it's kind of like more of a DJ tool. I kept it super stripped down with the intention of playing it in a DJ mix so that I could blend in the more percussive elements of other songs. Um, it's kind of for like that third deck or really just something to layer in alongside a more high, high power record, I guess. Um, and this one as well, like it's, it's definitely very bouncy. It's very like electro house influenced. So let's go ahead and listen a little bit just to see what we're working with. Also, I should note that I have been sick for the past week and I do have a ear infection with hearing loss in my right ear. So if I sound down bad, um, it's because I still kind of am, but these antibiotics are going to kick in and we're going to be back to 100% pretty soon. So let me show you how I designed the bass. I started with a sine wave. And then from there, I just added in the DC distortion, which is like a guitar pedal type plugin. And I've used this before. It's kind of my go-to because the like the default setting when you put it at um at 100 percent, it just gives it like it's not exactly a, a square wave it, i mean it is a square wave but it's not exactly like a, a printed square wave right so i just really like it i don't know why i gravitate towards it um from there i added filter freak and that one has the internal distortion happening as well as a dotted quarter note with some resonance coming in and out um so let's hear what those sound like together and already you can hear it's like a pretty alien you know starting to sound like dance music type sound right so from there i added in the vintage filter um and there's a few things going on here the lfo rate as well as the cutoff are are automating and then there's the also this one has an internal distortion so there's a couple layers of distortion happening that give the sound its characteristics and of course you can hear a little bit of the reverb that it's going to there um, but yeah when i threw that on i was like okay now this is really starting to groove um, it was still a little high pitched right so the way I changed that is I added a formant filter and pitched it down an octave. Um, and the formant gave it, it, it really started literally to talk to me. Um, and I just fell in love with how that sounded. So, you know, as producers, when something feels right, um, really don't question it unless it's like fighting your mix, you know. But if it's like a musical decision, um, really just go with that feeling. And so when I put that on, it kind of gave me like old school electro house, old school dubstep vibes, which are big influences of mine. So I just decided to keep it. Um, after that, in the chain, it's really just compression, a little more distortion, and I'll expand on that in a sec, and then some EQ. And the compression is just some side chain happening, but the distortion is a, a wave shaper. And so what that's doing it, there's certain parts um, where it just adds some more crunch to the sound. Um, and then what I did from there is I just printed it, right? So let's go ahead and hide this and make it inactive. 
uh, printed it into a stereo channel because that mono sound is also sending into this aux. And so that aux has the enhancer, which is a harmonic generation plugin, and then the Kramer uh, just boosting a little bit of the mid and the top. Um, the ensemble is kind of like a stereo type plugin, almost like a chorus. Um, and then just some EQ and compression. Uh, and from there, that really, like, that really was the sound. I mean, I, I use this technique where I'll start with a sine wave quite often, but this record in particular was one that was like four plugins, basically, and that was it. And that's not as common. I mean, you've seen in other videos, I'll print things like three times. And this one was just, I, I just didn't really fight the flow, I guess. I mean, it, it just felt right. And it, I wanted to keep it simple um, with the intention of, you know, playing it with other material. And I just edited some things like some little, you know, crossfades and, and shifting in time towards that second breakdown with the mix out. And then... Um, I guess the last little bit of like ear candy in this one would be Randy Savage. Uh, and you know, a lot of my records, I will throw him in there. It's kind of like a tag, I guess at this point. And I just added one of those little like reverse sweeps, um, where you just take part of the vocal and, you know, throw some reverb on it, print it out and then reverse it. Don't degrade the champion at any time. So it sweeps in and then it kind of sweeps out too because the reverb, it's actually automating the size of the room. So the room is shrinking as it comes into the drop just to signal to the listener uh, that something else is happening. And, you know, like I've said before, the key is really just automation. Um, looking back, I probably could have gotten away with, like, I'm not going to cap, I probably could have made this record like two minutes or, or like three minutes because it's really just something that you loop. But, you know, I, that's, that's, I'm still learning as a producer and I'm, I think in the future I will be making a lot shorter records, um, especially things that are like in, intended to be tools. Um, cause you know, if you're only looping it for like 32 bars, it, it doesn't really need to be five and a half minutes. So yeah, I mean, thank you for checking out today's video. Definitely hit me on Twitter, hit me on Instagram. I'll keep you guys updated about my ear situation and my sickness situation but you know we're on the come up we're coming up we're gonna be okay you know whatever you're going through just keep chugging along don't drop the ball as my uncle says and uh yeah thank you everyone for the support have a great rest of your evening